Uh, as you know, Doc, you can see right here, I'm doing a little bit of work on the brakes. The car has around, mm, I don't know, 140,000 miles, something like that. And these are the original rotors. So I've just gone on to the internet and did a search for some brake pads and rotors and could not find a competitive solution at Amazon. It's hard to imagine that. Uh, my local auto parts place has the rotors, believe it or not, in stock, but they don't have pads, which I find really hard to believe. Usually I think that these guys would not be there, but it must be kind of a standard Japanese rotor of some sort. So uh, I'm down to the wear bar on this. I've got to put these back on. Uh, it's going to take probably a day or two or three before the pads come in. Okay, pads came in. Just picked up the rotors. Time to get going. So, step one, get the caliper out of the way. That's going to be done by getting these old guys out of the way. 12 millimeter. Then we've got to get the actual, I don't know, holder up and out of here. This thing's held in place by two 17s. Uh, getting the top one is not the easiest in the world. Pretty tight clearance back there. Just throw a little uh, extension on it. Get some angle on it and then you can pop that out no problem. All right, let me get this out of the way. Okay so once it's exposed like this it should I mean if it was brand new it would just pull off and just kind of like wiggle it whatnot. But at this point you know it's got a little bit of rust in there. It's gonna take a hammer and just kind of tap on it. Whatnot. If it doesn't come loose which mine isn't then you gotta attack it with the old puller. All right, when this has a bunch of force on it, uh, once this thing gives, it's going to want to come flying off of here. So make sure you don't want to get hurt. Put some retaining on there. Something to retain it. I'm just using my lug nuts. All right, so anyway, this is what I went with right here. Through my advanced auto part place. It's got, uh, what's it say there, Amco, Bendix. Not sure you'll be able to see it, but let's try it like that. Napa, Rebestos, made in China. So, we'll see how it goes. Oh, by the way, there's the part. Looks pretty solid to me. Definitely got a bit more metal on it than the old one. Put some grease down in here. Hopefully that will keep it from oxidizing. And I think it's got like a coating of some sort on here to keep it from oxidizing so I'm gonna see if I can't apply some kind of a little degreaser cleaner on here and get that cleaned up a little bit it yeah, cleaned right up no problem some leftover muck that was on there anyway just a little gunk all right on the little caliper retainer here make sure these things float they've got to be pretty Easy to slide around, rotate them, pull them in and out. It's mine in good shape. And if they're working properly, you get pretty even wear on your brake pads. Not sure you can see it, but there's a little tiny bit of silver color right there on the end of the little screech maker. And it was just barely starting to screech. So I knew I was at the end of the life of these pads. I'll throw a little note in here if I can about how long they lasted, miles, and uh, how many years they were on the car. Anyway, let's open the box and get the new ones out. This is what I picked up. It's the wherever, gold, premium, semi-metallics, whatever. I just hope they don't squeak. Anyway, ultra quiet braking. And uh, they were on sale. I mean a massive sale, which is why going through advanced auto parts beat Amazon. Alright, this is one that came off this side of the car. It's got the little wear indicator noise creator on this side, so I'm going to use this one on this side. And these are symmetric, so it doesn't matter there. So Let's get that guy out of there, one of these guys, and that's what I'm going to go with. One of the problems you're going to face is getting this piston 
pushed back. So obviously as the pads are where the piston comes out, you gotta get that piston pushed back to drop over the new pads. I use a circlip spreader and just something to kind of narrow the space down a little bit like that. But this one has been particularly resistant today, so not only have I been using you know circlip spreaders and my hand grip, I've literally been placing my channel locks over the top. And uh, without those channel locks on there, this would not be moving. Get some good leverage like that right there. And just pinch it. And you can see it moving, I hope, a little tiny bit. And there we go. Yeah, once I got it started, it seemed to be a lot easier. Anyway, well, that's the process. Circle spreader. And there we go, all torqued up. It's 12 millimeter right here. It's not a very large bolt, doesn't take a lot of torque. Seventeens that sit back back over there. They take a bit. I don't know what the torque spec is uh, These are small. It's not much. Those are bigger. It's a bit more. It's good enough. I've got a problem right there Right now. It's not bothering me but This is going to go at some point Driver's side is just not coming loose I've gotten out the, the breaker bar to get the torque on this thing up. Got the mallet. Got the hammer for high frequency type stuff. Alright, I got the big breaker bar on it, and it's still not coming loose. Okay, you're going to see some videos on the internet if you dig around long enough that are going to tell you not to use this technique for driving a rotor off. But you can take a screw, put it in the back like this, and to augment the puller, which just went kabang as a result of using this technique, put a screw through here in order to push on the back of the rotor. And you tighten this little screw down like that. Doesn't take much, just a little screw right there. Sorry, a little wrench on that, a little wrench on this side. Just do that. Got one top, got one on bottom. Just a little pressure here and there. Back and forth, back and forth. But I tell you what, when it went, it was like an explosion. Kaboom! So anyway, we're loose. It's on. I gotta wipe it down, get my rag and wipe it off a little tiny bit. Uh, to get the job done, you need yourself a puller. I needed this kind of a wrench with a breaker bar to apply additional torques to here. A couple of wrenches, 12, 17, whatever, for the bolts that are back in here. You can also get to those bolts with ratcheting wrenches. Extension for that one right there. And a circlip spreader for dealing with that piston. And for me, some channel locks to apply some additional force to the circlip spreader. Of course, some kind of a wrench to get your lug nuts off. Alright, bolt it back on. Let's check it out. Now, don't forget, your brake pedal is going to be soft. Just got to pump that brake pedal back up. Pretty good. Alright, I'm back from a quick drive. No problems on that side. That side felt pretty good too. Definitely less squeaking than it used to be. So maybe those gold pads are better than the silvers that I used to get. Anyway, like I said, I think that's it for now. That's an 06 Aereo SX Premium. Two-wheel drive, automatic.